at that Last Supper lying, circled by his chosen band, humbly with the law complying. First he finished its command, then immortal food supplying, gave himself by his own hand. These verses are taken from one of the beautiful and poetic hymns to the body and blood of Jesus, written by St. Thomas Aquinas, a great theologian who's also a great poet and wrote many hymns to Jesus' body and blood in the reality of the Eucharist. And we find in the final verse of that stanza that I just read, a beautiful summary of Holy Thursday. He gave himself by his own hand. This is exactly what we're celebrating as we begin the Holy Triduum. This night, Holy Thursday, is the night by which Christ himself gave away his life by his own hand. He handed it over by his own choice, by his own surrender. And we find in this verse, this summary, which reminds us that Jesus handed himself over by his own hand, not at Calvary on the cross, but first, first at the Last Supper, surrounded by his apostles in a centuries-old Jewish ritual known as the Passover. Jesus offers his supreme gift of his love, first at the Last Supper and then on Calvary on Good Friday. Thomas Aquinas recounts poetically this reality in another Eucharistic hymn with these words, before having handed, to be handed over to his enemies by a disciple and to be put to death, he first handed himself over to his disciples on the plate of life. He first handed himself over to his disciples on the plate of life. Christ is the pure, spotless victim a man who's betrayed by a close friend and disciple, Judas. But as the hymn reveals, Christ is not a mere passive victim. And although he is handed over by Judas to his enemies, Christ, we are told, first handed himself over to his friends. Before Jesus was handed over to his enemies by Judas, Jesus handed himself over first to his friends. We are his friends. That is why we are here. Jesus has summoned us to hand himself over to us by his own hand, by this gesture of sheer self-giving, by handing himself over first to his friends freely and willingly. Christ changed everything. It's not a fate that was imposed on him, but it was a free act of a free man. The night of the Last Supper saw two kinds of handing over. Judas' betrayal is overcome first by the utter kindness and love of Christ handing his own life over to his friends. And he reveals a grace of surrender, a sacrifice like no other. And tonight we are those friends. Tonight we're welcomed by Christ, even though you and I have too many times to count, have betrayed his love through our own sins handed over his life for the pleasures of the world. And how is it that Jesus gives of his life? How does Jesus give his life by his own hand to us today, tonight, in this Mass? It's always only through the hands of the priests. Through the priesthood, Jesus continues to give of his life for others. And Aquinas' hymn, Lauda Sion, He connects beautifully the Last Supper and the Mass. He poetically writes, So let no one be deceived. The living bread the twelve received is the same that we consume. What he did at the Last Supper seated, Christ ordained to be repeated in his memory divine. This is the truth each Christian learns. Bread into his flesh he turns. Wine becomes his holy blood. Pope Benedict XVI, when he was Holy Father, addressed priests with these words. Priest Jesus Christ is always the one who gives, 
who draws us to himself. He alone can say, this is my body, this is my blood. And so he wishes to exercise his priesthood through us. The Lord laid his hands upon us, and now he wants our hands so that they may become his own in the world. He has truly delivered himself into our hands. And so it remains true for us this evening that our Lord will hand himself over to us in the supreme gift of his love through the hands of a priest, through me, and that it is Jesus Christ himself who has ordained from the beginning of time that I, somehow, in the mystery of his will, would be here for you on this Holy Thursday to be the priest, to give Christ to you, to give you his life. Because the way in which Christ hands himself over is through the hands of the priesthood. That my life is for you, which is what Jesus is always saying at every Eucharist, at every Mass. And so the priest is in, through the ordination rite, he is in the person of Jesus Christ. And so the priest can only speak with the words of Jesus because it is Jesus himself who is acting through the priest. It's always and only Christ who is acting through these weak, broken, and sinful men. It's through the hands of every priest that the life of Christ is given. So the priest too, as he says those words, the providential irony is that in a sense it's also true for the priest to say, this is my body, which is given for you. This is my blood. Because my body and my blood, I'm physically here, I'm a human person. But the priest is a man who has offered his life for the church. That the priest has imitated Jesus at his ordination to say that that he will hand himself over to Christ. You see, Holy Thursday is a night to be handed over. Christ first hands himself over in the Last Supper before Judas betrays him and hands him over to his enemies. But the true apostles the ones who truly unite themselves to Christ hand themselves over to him. The disciple always gives his life for Christ. And so Holy Thursday is meant to stir up in us a revival, a revival in our love for two gifts. The first gift is the Eucharist, which is Jesus. This is the personal and relational love of Christ for us. You see, Jesus, he wants us to know God's love when we see creation. He wants us to know his love when we see one another in our relationships with brothers and sisters in humanity. He wants us to know his love in those relationships and in those realities. But most especially, most especially, Does Jesus want us to know his love in the Eucharist? He wants us to know how much he loves us in the Eucharist. This is how God loves us, my brothers and sisters, in 2024. How does he love us? In the Eucharist. It's always been this way since the night of the Last Supper. This has always been his plan. is to give his life through his own hand. So the first that we stir up love for is the Eucharist itself, Christ. The second gift is the broken gift, the priesthood, to give thanks for a gift that none of us are worthy of, to give thanks to God for a life that we don't deserve. I was with one of my brother priests last week, Father Joseph Waswa, who's from Uganda, and he's up at Our Lady of Grace in Greensboro, and I was walking with him at Belmont Abbey. We were at the Abbey for the St. Benedict's Feast Day. And I said, it's just great to be a priest. And he just said, 
Yes, to call down heaven every day. What a gift. And I just stopped, because he's way holier than me. And I gave him a big hug, and I said, man, you just, that's, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, that's what we do every day. We call down heaven. You're right. Man. So, but it's great, because we're just always, we're always rediscovering what it means to be priests. Because we don't, we really don't have any idea about how amazing it really is to be a priest. And so it's, it's interesting to have this tremendous gift of the Eucharist, which we want to have a revival for in our hearts, but then to give thanks to God for the priesthood, which he gives to sinful men, to broken men. And it's only, it's only because Jesus has decided to do that. It's only because Jesus just chooses us. It's not because we come from great families or really, really, really holy or we did a lot of good for the church. He just calls men to the priesthood. He just does it because he keeps wanting to give himself to his people, to the church. So Christ feeds his priest by his own hand through the priesthood and he feeds the people, all of you tonight. It's humbling and overwhelming to me to realize this. And it's not because of me, it's because of Christ who works through me and how much I'm humbled that he, he wants to feed you all his life through me. And so tonight we want a revival of our love for the Eucharist and for the priesthood which Jesus establishes on Holy Thursday. This is what we celebrate. And tonight we also take a spiritual journey with Jesus Because at the end of Mass, we're going to take the greatest gift ever, the Eucharist, and we're going to process out of the church with Christ. We're going to leave church. We're going to follow Christ out of this place. And we're going to go to the gym, the spiritual Garden of Gethsemane. It's been decorated. To take Christ away, to follow him into the garden, and to keep watch. To spend time with Jesus and pray. And we're going to do this all through the night. We're doing it different this year. We're going to have it open for prayer all night long. So I hope we don't have sign-up sheets. It's only for, you know, what is it, 12 hours. So hopefully we can all participate in some way and, and be with Christ in the garden until tomorrow morning. Because he does ask us to spend time with him. See, we're never going to love the Eucharist unless we spend time with Jesus in the Eucharist. It's very simple. No priest is a priest today unless he spends spend time with Jesus the Eucharist. There's no saint in heaven who didn't have a burning love for Jesus in the Eucharist. And so this is a night to begin that revival as we keep watch with Christ all through the night. And as we do that, let's pray for our bishop, Peter Jugas, for all of our priests and our diocese, our seminarians, our three seminarians particularly that are here, Andrew Scott, Andrew Templeton, and Ronan Ostendorf. And pray for those who are studying for the priesthood, And let's pray for more vocations to the priesthood. Let's also pray for a Eucharistic revival here at St. Michael. Let's pray that we we all continue to deepen our love, to love Jesus more in the Eucharist and have that revival. Tonight, I really believe we can ask him for this and that he wants to give it to us in the midst of this national Eucharistic revival. Let's ask him for this revival right here at home. I think it will happen. In our prayers before our Eucharistic Lord, then, tonight, my brothers and sisters, we offer our lives to him who gave himself to us by his own hand. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.